Welcome to Pick 6 TV. I'm Dylan Harper. And I'm Kyle Stanley. It's been a while. We missed you guys. But we're going to have start starting now. Shows almost every day, as often yeah. as we can. More rumors. We're getting better. Oh, yeah. Top Keep checking line. in. All right, start off. we gotta do. We got to do this show. We're going to do good today. We're going to do it. Good. Pretty Great quick. Show. All right. Starting off with the NFL, as we always do. Our favorite sport. Great sport. Brett Favre. Got to talk about Brett Favre a little bit. Brad Childress wants an answer from Brett Favre by Friday, whether he's coming back or not. Uh, let's just, I got two questions for you. First of all, is Brett Favre going to be, is he going to come back? Is it, and is he going to have success in the league if he comes back? God, I hope he does not come back. I mean, I am sick of hearing about this and having it drag on every year. Uh, he needs to just retire. He, he needs to make up his mind is what he needs to do, most importantly. Yeah. And if his choice is to retire, he needs to stay retired. Stay retired. It's, I know it's hard for these guys to, and, to um, give it up. but You know, I, I just don't see him having that much success this year. Do you think it's going to be any different than last year? No, I think he's going to play a lot like he did at the end of last season. Yeah, he started out great, and then he just tapered off at the end. Uh, it could be the injury. We'll see. Yeah. He's getting old. I mean, he's playing the NFL for a long time. It wears you down. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I actually, I want him to come back. And I'll explain. I, I, I like to hear this. I, all right, when it comes to the Monday night football game, the Packers versus the Vikings, Brett Favre's on the team. Are you going to watch to see B.J. Raji sack him 12 times? 12 times? Well, I hope so. <laughs> but I will watch it. That's exactly. Sure. I'll watch People it. will watch it. People like People. to watch Brett Favre. Whether you love him or hate him, it's like Notre Dame. We talked about Notre Dame a while ago. Yeah. Notre Dame football. Whether you love Notre Dame or hate Notre Dame, People like to watch him. Yeah, yeah. So it's Brett Favre's the same way. Whether you love him or hate him, people like to watch him, and more people will watch football, and Brett Favre's in it, so I yeah. want him to come back, and I want to see B.J. Raji sack him 12 times. If that happens, I'm going to be the happiest man ever. That's a little excessive. It's 12 times. It's going to be the record right. and some. All right, stick with NFL. Just a quick little mini camp update. So, you know, we got to talk about some fantasy tips. We're doing our fantasy draft tomorrow, so yeah, yeah. we won't put this video up till after it's done. Uh, we'll give you an update of who we got later tonight. Well... Tonight for you guys. Yeah. Uh, mini camp. Josh Morgan for the San Francisco 49ers. We are on the West Coast, so we see a lot of the West Coast teams. Mini camps a little bit closer on the news and stuff. So, yeah. Josh Morgan is a guy who's absolutely tearing it up. He's doing phenomenal. Now, uh, he might be a great sleeper to pick for fantasy. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a guy who's projected pretty high in the draft. Had ended some up falling injury down issues, to, I think. Yeah, fell down to the, the sixth round. Niners picked him up, and uh, he's he has just been great with the Niners so far. He did a great rookie season last year. Yeah, don't you know? I don't know how many yards he's gonna get, but I think he's gonna get somewhere around ten to fifteen touchdowns, which is he could get ten touchdowns next year. Solid guy to have in your yeah, team. You know, I think yeah, we'll use him a lot in the goal line situations. Yeah, keep keep him on the bench. Play it. Well, you put him in when they play Detroit or or uh, St. Louis. The Rams play him twice. They are in the division, so yeah. So that's three games right there. Yeah. You might get two or three touchdowns. So just uh, Tom Brady threw his first throws today. Uh, there's a there's actually just a little video of him doing it on uh, in. Foxborough. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't really, I don't honestly don't think this is news. I don't care about this at all. But, no, but, but it leads me to my other question. The only reason I mentioned this, do we care that veterans are skipping at minicamp? Because we sure talk about it on ESPN. And... Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of talk about it. The rookie minicamps are for new players to learn the new playbook. Um, veterans don't typically go. So I don't, I don't know why it's a big deal yeah, this year. Yeah, it's just not an issue. I think there's not a lot to talk about. Now, speaking of Foxborough, that same field Tom Brady was throwing on was the men's NCAA lacrosse Division One championships. And, you know, lacrosse is a great sport. We love lacrosse. We, yeah. we both played it throughout high school. It's a great game. It can be really fun to watch, and this game is a great example. It was. In overtime, overtime finish, but with four seconds left, Kenny Nims scored the game tire. Yeah, to go into Syracuse. overtime for Syracuse. Send him into overtime. Send him into overtime. And then Cody Jamison scored the winner in OT. And, you know, talk about an exciting finish. Four seconds left. Oh, that's yeah. that's incredible. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, Syracuse won back-to-back -back titles this, last first year. This year. First, first, first time since Princeton in 97-98. Uh, and now I think, I believe Syracuse has the most men's titles. They, they overtook Johns Hopkins, so now they are the perennial powerhouse. They are the Pittsburgh Steelers of NCAA men's lacrosse. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to see. I'd like to see lacrosse a little bit more on ESPN, and yeah. you know, you gotta think where where's the spot for it? Poker. Po exactly. Poker. <laughs> poker during poker. Great spot. It, for there's poker's poker. on. Show the lacrosse games. They don't ping have to be pong, live. Lacrosse, ping pong, I mean, lacrosse. Read my article. Ping pong, <laughs> lacrosse. Uh, you know, college baseball. I love baseball. I, I love that. it. Well, hear me out. I love baseball. I really do. Yeah. There are some college baseball games. I don't want to see a college baseball blowout. 
Oh yeah. On ESPN. All right. Especially when the games are delayed, we know someone's going to win sixteen to three. Yeah, we've Don't seen show the, it. it, and it's on the it's scrolling on the little bottom of the ESPN yeah. screen telling you the score. I don't want to see it. I'd much rather see a lacrosse. The cross games aren't going to be on the score. Yeah. You know, they're going to be closer. Uh, I'd rather see they're a close hitting game. in lacrosse. I mean, yeah. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> All right. Moving on from lacrosse down to baseball. Uh, quick baseball note we got to go some basketball, too. Yeah. Big Poppy got moved down in the lineup. Oh, yeah. Or they're discussing moving him down the lineup, which means they're going to move him down eventually. Probably. Is this a good idea? What do you think? No, I think you need to take some pressure off him. He's clearly not playing well. He yeah. has that one home run. Um, you know, take some pressure off him, move him back to a... 195 average, too. Yeah. Only 18 RBIs, which, to put it in perspective, the uh, San Francisco Giants cleanup hitter, Benji Molina, has 30 RBIs, so 18... Uh, not not too good. Of, no, no, he, he needs some, a little less pressure on him. So, move him, see what see what he can do there. I like to see him. I like your idea for the pressure, but I like to see him actually move up in the lineup, move to the second spot, get him more at-bats a game. Yeah. Hopefully, maybe, maybe fix his swing. But we'll see. All right, going on to basketball... The Lakers, the Nuggets. Lakers got they got beat up on tonight. Nuggets handled them. Yeah. Got tons of rebounds. It's tied up the series two to two. Is this a big deal? No, you know I think the Lakers didn't have their best game tonight. And um, you know we constantly hear about how we have game changers or series changing plays. Turning points. I turning, believe is the, is the phrase that they love to use. Turning points. Like how how a slam dunk or a big shot was a was a turning point. And, you remember um, the Rajon Rondo dunk was the turning point of that series, at which the Magic went on to win. Yeah, um, every game. It seems like there's a turning point, and uh, <coughs> teams play bad, especially when you have two teams that are that are as close as you know the Nuggets and the Lakers, or the, the Magic and the Cavs. Speaking of the Magic and the Cavs, I, the LeBron James shot was supposed to be another turning point, but yeah. the Magic handled the Cavs. Is this series, is this going to be an exciting series? Is it pretty much over in favor of Magic? What's going on? Yeah, I think the Magic are going to beat the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know, I, I, I don't know. I think they'll do it in six games. Give the Cavs another one, another win. Probably get one more win. Yeah, but, but I, I just, you know, there's not that many turning points. It doesn't affect the game that much. Teams have down games, and uh, other teams have great games. It's just how it works out. So I think the Lakers will come out on top, and I think the Magic will come out on top as well. All right, now the four players, the four big players left, I think he got Kobe, I think Chauncey, even though Carmelo's the stat guy, Chauncey is the leader of that team. LeBron James and Dwight Howard, who is the best one of those in your mind? Who's played the best in the playoffs? Who's the best one? Who's going to win the championship? We're going to all three. Um, damn. I think the best player right now is still remains to be Kobe Bryant. The Black Mamba. Black Mamba, yeah. Just his his ability in the fourth quarter and uh, his the leadership that he shows over the Lakers. Clutch and, is pretty important. Yeah, yeah. When you can, when you, can you know, when you got that the guy you can give the ball to in the fourth quarter and you know, you know you're going to come out on top. That's a great, great guy to have, and um, I, I think he's he's been great. And uh, Dwight Howard's another guy who I just love in the playoffs. He's played phenomenally. They're a great team, and you know they, they've really rallied around him, and, and they've been playing incredibly well against the Cavaliers. All right, now which one of those players is going to win a championship? You know, I'm going to go with Kobe Bryant. Kobe, all right, the Black Mamba himself. By the way, those Muppet commercials with Kobe and LeBron, hilarious. Great. YouTube it right now. First, watch our videos, then. <laughs> YouTube Kobe LeBron commercial. It's three rings. The, the three best. rings commercial. It's it's pretty funny. It's if you're if you're a basketball fan, you will enjoy it. All right, that'll pretty much do it for us. Last little note, Manny Ramirez. We're not going to talk about why because we don't talk about that on Pick Six Sports. But we're just going to say out for fifty games. Obviously, do you think that your your division winner, our division winner, was the Dodgers? Does that change now? Um, you know they're still playing well. The rest of the division isn't playing great. I love to say that the Giants or the Padres or someone was playing better, but they're not. So I'm, I'm going to still go with the Dodgers, as much as it kills me inside. I'm actually going to change my mind. I'm going to say Dodgers come in third. Giants and Padres have a close race. Padres come out on top at the end of the season. All right. We'll see, though. A lot of games to go. A lot of games left. All right, that'll do it from Big 6 TV. See you later, guys. All right, that was much better.